It's Thursday, September 2nd. We look at the sky overhead. It's beautiful blue. Hardly any clouds. Uh, the humidity is down. Temperature is down. There's a light breeze. It's absolutely and positively gorgeous. Big difference from what it was like yesterday. In case you haven't heard, South Jersey got the remnants of Hurricane Ida yesterday. And roughly in that direction, there were tornadoes. I have seen some of the pictures of some of the devastation and it was not something that I would ever expect in South Jersey because this area is not known for tornadoes. In all the years I've lived here, I can only remember hearing about a tornado two, maybe three times, and none of them were really that bad. Homes were destroyed, I heard that people were trapped in their basement, I heard that a farmer lost his barn, lost some cows, and that there's cows loose that they haven't been able to round up yet. I haven't been able to find much information on that. And while I have not seen any of the devastation for myself, I have seen pictures and I was horrified. I honestly do not know how well the run-in would withstand something like that. Now, it was not built here, it was brought in, and it's supposed to be bolted to these things here, and. You can see it's not, so I don't know if there's more that it's bolted to or not. I don't know if they maybe just didn't get it in straight when they put it in. But that was supposed to be for tornadoes, as well as those plates up there. They're supposed to make it so that the roof doesn't get blown off. Whether or not they actually work, I don't know, and I don't really want to find out. I don't know how well the chickens would fare with a tornado. Thumper or Gidget in her little house over there I said it's not something I ever want to find out But if you own animals you owe it to them to be as prepared as possible Should bad weather hit So we're going to talk about some of the things you can do to prepare the first thing you want to take into consideration is your horse on any type of medication or any of your animals if they are do you have enough to last for quite some time? So let's face it, with the devastation that was wrought by Ida, there could be disruption in getting things that you need. And you might not be able to get the medications. And if you can't, that animal could be in a lot of trouble. Now, I knew I was low on chick feed, but I did not have time because of hubby to get feed. I went this morning and I stocked up on feed. I have enough now to last me at least through September and at least partly into October. Don't really know how long it'll last since i uh, be getting rid of chickens so I hopefully won't be using as much chicken food. But that's another thing you might have trouble getting. I've heard that there's places down south that you're not going to have power for a month or so. So if you live in that area, do you have enough feed to last until the power is restored. Another thing you want to take into consideration is water. Even if you have a generator and have a well, you may not want to be constantly running the generator, especially if it's going to be a long time before power is restored. So it's a good idea to do what you can to have water. Now, one thing I did do yesterday I topped up the stock tank. And you can see where somebody's got some grass in there. Thanks, guys. But I have the stock tank. This is 44 gallons. Of course, I had all the chicken waters filled. And while I didn't do it yesterday, I have filled water buckets for the horses. The watering can that I use for transporting water to the chickens was filled. There's the watering can. And I also have several containers that I can put water in. I have two this size, they hold 15 gallons. I have one that's a little bit bigger that holds 22 gallons. I also have several of these that hold five gallons. With all the containers that I have for water, that gives me enough water to at last at least a week, if not longer. And if I needed water for longer than that, then yeah, I would have to be taking uh, containers home because there's no generator out here. 
we have a generator that does a whole house, so I'd be able to fill up containers and bring them out to the farm. Another thing you might want to think about, this is a livestock marker. I have not used it since I've moved the horses down here, but in the field that I used to be in, there were trees right along the fence line, and I was always afraid when there was bad weather of having trees come down on the fence line and breaking it down and having the horses freak out and get out. So I would put my phone number on the side of it with the pens here. You can see there's the, these are pro I don't even know that these would work anymore. It's been so long since I've used them. Well, I guess they would. Probably just have to clean it up some. So that's one way that you can mark your animals. Another thing that I've heard people doing is taking and writing information about the horse on a piece of paper, putting it in something waterproof, and braiding that into the horse's mane. So that, that way, if the horses get out and somebody finds them, they know where they belong. You know, horses will normally stick in the area that they're used to, but if they're terrified and run off, they may not know how to get back. So, hope you learned something from this video. I hope you have a nice day and I'll talk at you later.